Hi, my name's Ethan, I'm one of the sales engineers here at Advanced Engineering. As you know, leaks are an all too common problem within the refrigeration and chillers, especially within the supermarkets. Whilst this can be seen as inconvenient, it also can be very costly to the supermarkets as well as the service companies themselves. If you've had the pleasure of working on the food cabinets, you'll be all too familiar with the unpleasant smells and sights found underneath the base plate in the condensate tray. So why do leaks happen? Leaks are usually caused by blockages within your condensate drain. Without taking appropriate action, these blockages can come back again and again, placing customers and businesses at risk. For the purpose of this video, we've artificially created the slime so you can see exactly how to use our product. With moisture and food readily available, condensate drains are perfect breeding grounds for mould, algae and bacteria. Exopolysaccharide jelly, or slime, builds up and quickly leads to blockages. So how do you stop the slime build up in your cabinet? That's why Advanced Engineering has come up with a three-step process. It's not only cost-effective and easy to implement, it also will give you 12-month year-long protection. So due to high demand, I'm going to show you how to use the Drain Safe, Cool Safe and Jarley Strips as part of the three-step recommended process. For added peace of mind, all products are independently registered with NSF for use in food storage and food preparation areas. Your first job is to have relevant PPE, not just because you're using chemicals, but because of the bacteria found in the slime. What you need to have is gloves, goggles, and have covered arms. Step one is to clean and clear any organic blockages found in the condensate tray, the drain, or even a pump if there's one present. First thing you need to do is use a wet vac to remove the excess water and jelly from the tray and condensate tray. Most refrigeration engineers are familiar with sucking water and jelly from the drain hole already and it's common practice in most supermarkets. However, it is only quite a localised solution, which only works when the drain line is full. The second you get an air gap in the lines, it will fail to remove any more jelly. This is where drain safe comes in. We recommend using 500ml per drain. As it's heavier than water, it will break down any residual exopolysaccharide blockages further down the drain, ensuring that you have a free flow in lines using hydrolysis. After you've cleared the slime, standing water and used drain safe, we recommend blocking the drain prior to starting to do any more cleaning. This will stop any jelly dirt which is dislodged from the coil and surrounding casework from accumulating in the drain lines. Step two, you need to clean the evaporator coil you need to give the coil a thorough clean using a quality coil cleaner. CoolSafe will not only remove contaminants, but also the microbes it comes in contact with. Next, you need to mix CoolSafe in a low pressure sprayer, such as our Hydra sprayer, at a ratio of one part product, five parts water. Depending on the size of the unit, simply spray four to six liters of diluted CoolSafe onto all the surfaces including the condensate tray as well as thoroughly spraying the evaporator coil. CoolSafe will kill any slime causing microorganisms as well as separating and loosening the dirt and slime from all the surfaces. You will need to leave it 10 minutes for it to work. When doing this in the real world situation it makes sense to be working your way down the line at this point. If you repeat these first two steps going down the line, by the time you get to the end of the island, you're ready to start at the beginning and start the jet washing. You're probably asking yourself, why use CoolSafe when we recommend jet washing anyway? We say, try it with and without, and you'll be amazed at the difference. Now you've left it 10 minutes, it's time to jet wash. Now you've finished jet washing, it's now time to use the wet vac to remove the excess water. Don't forget to remove whatever you're using to block the drain. Step 
Step three, we need to protect against new growth for up to 12 months. Whilst we know the first two steps are highly effective, we need to ensure that the product is long lasting and contains biocides and surfactants to fight against new growth. It's now time to place the Jarley strips inside the condensate tray. Determining how many Jarley strips to use is simple. It's one per meter of cabinet. So if the cabinet is three meters wide, you need three strips. When placing the Jarley strips, they need to be placed at the lowest points of the condensate tray and evenly spaced. If the chiller cabinet has a central drain, we'd recommend breaking one of the strips in half and placing either side of the drain hole. We have application notes available which shows how to apply the strips correctly, depending on the configuration of the condensate tray and drain holes. Some final points to bear in mind. The Jarley strips will stop any new microorganisms from growing and will therefore stop any slime buildup and maintain free flowing drains. They will not remove any existing slime buildup, which is why it's important to do the first two steps before putting in the Jarley strips. This is true for all condensate drain treatment in the market. For this process to be successful, you need to repeat all three steps on all the cabinets which feed on the same drain. This is the only way to ensure free flow in drains. Otherwise, the jelly can start to build up in the drain again. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. If you do all three steps as shown, you'll be able to see a 100% reduction in callouts due to block drains and jelly. If we could be of any assistance, feel free to visit our website or call us.